All right, guys, so we are going to start getting ready to deploy to Heroku, and there's there's a few steps that we need to take. So in this video, what I want to discuss is our config keys, okay? And this is something that's important when you're deploying to production. If we look in config and we look in keys.js, we have our complete MongoDB database string, which has our username and password. We also have the secret for the, for the JSON web token. Uh, we don't want to push this this data, okay? Um, I plan on putting this on GitHub. Most open source projects are pushed to GitHub, and you don't want people to see your actual database information or any other keys. If you were to use like Google OAuth or something like that, you'd probably put that secret, that API key or secret in here as well. And you don't want this to be displayed um, to other people. So what we're going to do is we're going to create two new files in, in config. And if you guys, if any of you took my Node.js uh, dev to deployment course, then this is we're doing the same thing we did there. We're going to create a file called keys underscore dev dot JS. And then we're also going to create a file called keys underscore prod dot JS. All right, now the dev is actually going to have what we have in here now. So we can copy this whole thing and put this in dev. And then this is going to be our dev database. And it's up to you if you want to use the same database for development and production, or you could use two separate ones. It's up to you. But we don't want to push this keys dev file to Heroku or, or GitHub or, or anywhere, really. It's for it's just for our development machine. So I'm going to save this. And then we're going to go to keys prod and I'm going to paste it in again, except in keys prod, we're actually going to use environment variables. OK, so what we'll do is we'll replace the Mongo URI value with process dot env dot Mongo. This could be anything. We're going to call it Mongo URI uh, URI like that. All right, and then for the secret or key, we're going to do process dot env dot secret. Uh, let's do secret underscore or underscore key. OK, now we can add these variables through our Heroku interface, OK, through the platform. Now, if someone gets this file, if we push this to GitHub, this means nothing to them. They, they this tells them nothing. It, these are going to Basically, our server is going to is going to recognize this. OK, no one else is going to understand uh, what the actual URI is or what the actual secret is. So let's save this file and then in keys.js, which is what is, which is the file we're actually including. If we look at our server.js, uh, we're bringing in keys, Mongo URI and so on. Uh, what we want to do is we want to test to see what environment we're in. So we can do that by saying if process dot env dot node underscore env. So if the environment is equal to production, whoops. So if the environment is equal to production, then we want to module dot exports. And then we just want to do require and we want our keys prod. So we want to say dot slash keys underscore prod. All right. And then what I'll do is just copy this line here and then we'll do an else. So if we're not in production, then we want to load our keys dev. OK, so we'll go like that. Now, when we deploy to Heroku, this will actually be production. So it'll load keys prod, which has the Heroku environment variables. If we're on if we're in dev, which we are now on our local machine, it, it should load keys dev. OK, hopefully that makes sense. Now, the keys dev, we don't want this to get pushed. So what we need to do is go to our git ignore file in our root, not in the client, not in the react, but in the root server. We just want to add to that slash config slash keys underscore dev dot JS. OK, and then that won't, that shouldn't get pushed. So we can close that up and close that up. And let's actually see if this still works. So we'll go back to our local application. I still have it running. I have NPM run dev um, running, but let's make sure we can still log in. OK, good. So it's getting our data, meaning that it is connected to our database. 
All right. So now, in the next video, we're going to talk a little bit about the about how this process works, about how we can actually have React on our front end and and Node on our back end, and have them work together and talk to each other, and also compile our React application. All right. So we'll talk about that next, and we'll take some steps. Some steps to、um, get ready to deploy.